Hello, everybody. Okay, so my name is Amanda Knutson. Chris is my husband, and we were joking about this whole idea about his like 30 minute watch me do family history thing. And, and I was like, okay, now you've done your way. I should show them my way because my way is so different. So um, we thought it'd be fun for you guys to see the way that I do my family history because he and I do them so differently than each other, but we both get huge results. We're able to find lots of people, lots of things to do, and um, lots of records to attach and new people that we discover, but we just go about doing it a different way. So everybody kind of thinks differently. I think our brains are wired a little bit differently, and I am a more visual person, and going in family search and seeing the little descendancy view, I, my brain can't handle it for some reason. I don't know if it's just like too many words, too many names stacked on each other, and like the indenting and the indenting, it drives me crazy. So I don't do my family history that way. I do it a little bit differently. So we thought I would show you guys the way I do it, just in case anybody needs like a different way about approaching their family history. So I'm gonna show you my way. I'm gonna like hide my little picture thing now because you know, you don't need to stare at me. Okay, so I'm logged into Family Search. Um, so I always log in first, that way I'm ready to go, but I actually go to this website called Pazilla. So um, this is its little homepage, and then I'm already signed in. And then it does your little thing, red is me, and then if you hover, it gives you these little things. And this is a free platform. They do have a paid version, and I actually do have the paid version. So I'm gonna have a few features that not everybody has. You have to have an account, um, a paid membership. I'm trying to remember how much it is. It was totally worth it, in my opinion. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> just because I love it so much. Um, I think it's like 30 or $40 for like the year or something. So I'm like, you know, that's fine with me. That's like going to go see just a couple movies, and I use this way more than any movie. So, um, okay, so you hover and you see everything. If you wanna click on somebody, you click on them. Um, so this is my little tree. This you can see, we actually don't go very far back. We're kinda of stuck because my, um, my great great grandparents and so forth, they came from Germany and we don't actually know where. We, we've been trying to investigate. I think we need to go visit Germany. Um, through doing a little bit of digging, it looks like it's actually no, not really Germany. It's actually Poland in today's references. So um, yeah, so we gotta do a little digging. But anyway, um, and we are stuck here too. Um, anyway, so what I do is I come over here to this generations thing and I wanna go back a little further. So I go back uh, either seven or eight. So I'm in my 40s. Um, so depending on your um, your age, you know, you may you might have been fine on that page. You might wanna to go to seven generations, you might wanna to go to eight generations. But basically we hover so that, yeah, see I could just do, I think I've, yeah, I usually do seven. Sorry, let's just do the seven. Yeah, this is where I've been. Now, I like this because I have a nice systematic approach to doing my family history. I I feel like I very easily get lost in the tree, especially when I'm doing cousins and their husbands and their spouses and their kids' kids and the kids and the kids and the kids. It just, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like, where am I? Like, who's, who's like descendant, you know, are these people, you know, so I just want to be able to keep track. So what I do is I, I just have a little system. I go from left to right. So I just pick the person on the left and then I can gradually, as I do more research, I can work my way around the outer rim here of the fan. So I pick Nathaniel Eccles. He, uh, he lived, you know, between the mid 1700s um, to the 1800s. And so his kids are gonna be generally like in a good place that I like to do research. Um, so I click on him and then I click this descendants button. Now it does this really, really cool thing. It's gonna show you an aerial view if you were to like graph out his family. So this is him. And these lines coming out connect to his children. So these 
this ring, like the rings of a tree, this ring is his children. And then the yellow line indicates that this is the line that my my connection is through. All right, so then, then you can see this child, John Eccles, had these kids, all these ones that connect. Sorry about the pop-ups that go crazy. Um, and then he had this son that had these. And then he had this son that had these, so on and so forth, okay? But I see that there are two kids here who didn't have families. Now, because they were born in 1768, I just, I can't find the records, really. I can't find anything to support much about them um, at this time with my, you know, my skill level anyway. I haven't been able to find it very easily. Um, so, but that's what you can do is you can look at this and you can say, okay, who doesn't have a line? Like, look at this person. This person doesn't have any children. I wonder why. Like, did they die young? Did they just never marry? Did they um, just, you know, whatever? Or is it just not on the tree yet? So, and that person was born 1819. So they are going to show up on some census records so that I should be able to learn more about her. So I can click on her and I can, um, I can, oops, sorry, click on her and then I can say view in family tree and I can learn more about her. I don't know why this zoomed in. Like my kids have this, I, this is not my computer. <laughs> this is my kid's computer. Stop. How do I get back out? Oh, uh, here we go. I'll just scroll out. My goodness. I usually, I work on my laptop. I usually don't use this computer. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to show you the paid feature function though of why I use Pozilla over here. So remember, I'm on Nathaniel Eccles and this is all of his descendancy. So um, I'm going to click on hints over here, this hints button. And now what it's going to do, see this little orange thing that's going around? That's the program communicating with Family Search and it is searching Family Search and seeing if any of the people have record hints. Meaning, are there any sources floating around in space <laughs> that are um, that mention these people and are like probably them? So they're they're potentially my people's sources. So it could be a birth record, a marriage record, a death record, a census, a uh, uh, you know whatever. Lots of different things. So. It's thinking and it's kind of stuck right now. But anyway, but see, look at all these that it found so far. So I can just one by one go and click on each of these people. <laughs> but those of you who don't like multiple tabs are going to kind of have a little bit of a, of a heart attack here. But I'm going to show you what I do. <laughs> I say go ahead and search 10 hits. What it's going to do. Oh, OK. The first time it does just one. OK, search 10 hits. Boom. See how it opened up 10 browsers? So it's going to very quickly just say, okay, here are some sources. Take a look at it. Um, so it's going to see they're all loading. So it's going to just take a minute. And by doing this, I can sometimes discover duplicates or I discover um, things being attached incorrectly. I'm finding either information that needs to be changed, things that have to be fixed. Um, some things take a little bit more time to dig into and I don't want to do them um, in these videos. So like right here, this lady, so you know, like did she have multiple marriages? I don't know. Let's look at her. Kate. Okay. So yeah. So this was a different, different husband and a child. Now, obviously, I doubt his name was Low with a period. So it would be nice to learn what his real name is. So, and we have no dates on him. So this would be something that I would click on and trying to learn a little bit more about. Anyway, but that's one thing that I can do. But I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just try to do the low hanging fruit. You know, those easy things to just clean up the records. And the reason why I like to do this is Let's say I have an ancestor and I just, I know for a fact everything about their life and, and I have everything entered in. It's so neat and tidy. Everything's all perfect. Then let's say um, he exists in some records that have newly been added to um, family search. 
Well, sometimes people in stumbling on other records for their people, they might stumble across something that my ancestor is mentioned in. And they might not find him existing on the tree in a very quick preliminary search. So that doesn't mean that my answer is not on the tree. It just means that he wasn't found very quickly in a very uh, brief preliminary search. And so sometimes people are creating duplicates. So I don't want duplicates going around and then everything getting all messed up. So I like to, as, as often as I see a source, even if it's something I'm like, oh, already I have that, I already have that. Oh, I know that already. That's already attached. Sometimes there's duplicate versions of the sources and everything, but to help avoid other people creating duplicate versions of the people, I go ahead and I attach everything to the people. It might be, like I said, it might be a duplicate source, but I'd rather have a duplicate source um, attached to my person than having five versions of my person floating around the tree. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. So anyway, so I like to really, really get sources attached to the correct people and get everything all cleaned up and be neat and tidy on the tree. So, okay, so here we have this source is saying, um, this is a census record, 1930, Alice, um, this is when she's married, so this is her maiden name, Parks, here she's married, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attach, because this is them, based on, you know, where they're living, their husband and wife, it just, you know, it makes sense. This says it's a niece. Um, so, there, there's lots of different things you can do and very quickly you can go off on tangents. Sometimes I'll be like, ooh, let me find out who her niece is and let me get her attached. But sometimes that can take a lot of time and divert me from what I'm trying to do. So um, a lot of times I just let it go. And then through searching other things, maybe I'll find this person. Or I have my little notepad and paper and I can make a note that go visit Alice. Also, I'll write Alice, I'll write her ID number, and I'll say 1930 census, niece Margaret to attach. And then later, when I don't have anything else to do, <laughs> I will go and I will attach her and find her. But that means going through Alice and through her husband, because we don't know which line this is. She could be, you know, it's, Jackson isn't her name and Parks isn't her name. So, she, you know, we don't know who she is, which line she's on. She's married. She's divorced. She's, you know, we have no idea. So I'm just going to like kind of ignore her for now. And then I close that tab. And then I go to this one. Oh, look, it's Alice again. And look, somebody attached everybody else, but they didn't attach Alice. I wonder why. I have no idea. I'm just going to go ahead and attach her. Maybe they didn't. I don't know. Some people just don't attach everybody, like like how I just ignored that one girl, you know? Somebody just ignored Alice. So I'm going to close that, go to the next one, Alice again, and this is a marriage record, so that's cool. Um, come up here, marriage. Now, this is the 26th of April, and this same, um, same county of Kentucky. Um, so sometimes you have where the marriage date is different. Sometimes that is because one was actually where they got the license and the other one is technically the marriage. So um, since we have a marriage date that is two days later, I'm going to assume, and I could be assuming incorrectly, but I'm going to assume that this is the licensing date and this is the marriage date. So we're, I'm not gonna delete this, I'm not gonna change this, but I'm not gonna add this either because we don't need to have multiple entries of a marriage date. The important thing is we know they're married. It was basically this day and we're gonna attach this as a source. So if somebody is questioning or has concerns, they can come back and they can look at all these sources and they can make that determination. Me not knowing them personally and not knowing the issue, I feel like I can't really make that judgment call. So I'm gonna just attach it, and that way it is there for somebody else to evaluate if they want to, if they feel they need to change this date. But this date is probably this date because there was another marriage record with that date. So I'm just gonna kind of let that go. It's attached, the information's there. Okay, now we have a different person. This is Mary L. Parks, married to a Jerry Donahue. 
And it says Matthews. That's interesting. So I'll have to look at that. And okay. So this will be an interesting family to look at because it's Mary Parks, married to Jerry Donahue, and they have a son here in 1890 that's not on their tree, and all they have is just this one son. So this is kind of an interesting situation to look at. So um, I do want to look more into this. So just to try to clear up some tabs, I'm just going to quickly look and just see if there's any easy, let's just get them attached and get them out of here kind of sources. So I'm going to go attach, Henry, attach, Sarah Elizabeth Julian, 1903-1903. Um, here's her birth date, yep, same person. So she was living here. I'm just gonna attach that. Um, this is her marriage. So I'm gonna change the focus to Sarah Elizabeth Julian and see if we have this husband on the tree. Nope, this is another, and see Julian. So this is a second marriage because she married a Julian and now here she is marrying a Sut with a last name of Julian. So let's see, oh, he's not on there. So I'm gonna say none of the above and I'm gonna add him because this is her second marriage. I'm gonna create him as a new person. And then I'm gonna write this down on a piece of paper that I am creating this person by this name because I need to remember that I'm adding somebody to the tree and I need to make sure that they are not a duplicate because as I go around and do all my other work, I might forget that it all came from adding this guy. Does that make sense? It can be you very, 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 very quickly, I can get distracted. I don't know if I'm ADD, <laughs> but sometimes I think I might be because I, I don't know, anyway. <laughs> so I get all these things added on and then I say attach and then we know his parents. So what I like to do is I click on him, oops, I click on him and I open him up in a new tab and then I toggle back and forth and I say his, his dad was Andy Sut, Andy, Andrew, hmm, I wonder. So I'm going to go to add a parent and I'm going to just type in the information on that record. I'm going to say Andy Sut and he's male and he's deceased and the wife's name was Elizabeth Condor. Ponder spouse. Oop. Elizabeth Ponder. And say next. And let's see if it finds them. Ah. Andrew Sa Elizabeth Condor. Okay. My gut is saying this is them, you know. Eliza Elizabeth. So I'm gonna say add couple. Now it's gonna add them, and I'm gonna see he is a Tony. Did he already exist on their tree? No, so he, I didn't create a duplicate on this couple. Um, this still could mean there could be another Andrew and Elizabeth floating around um, because their names are different on record. So sometimes people create new people based on, oh, that's a different name. Okay, so now I'm gonna change, put the focus on Tony and I'm gonna attach this to these parents of his. And then this just says other, so that's probably like the person who officiated or a witness, so we're not gonna worry about that. So um, I wrote down on my piece of paper, Tony Hardin Sut, and I'm gonna say, um, um, well, no, I'm just gonna leave it at that, and just that I added him. And then, um, so I can remember, and then I'm gonna close this tab. And just really quickly, let me just see if there's any other quick to add, because remember, I opened up 10 tabs from Pazilla. So I just want to try to, you know, find the tabs that are, find, find the sources that are giving me enough information to do some research, and then just quickly addressing the other tabs and closing them to just get them done and out of the way. So that was an easy one. We didn't learn anything new, but we attached this family. It just helps to confirm who lived with who when. Um, here we have Katie Poff, Henry Poff, okay, so it looks like a match. So we are going to just add them, Henry, and then I'm going to do Elizabeth, and Edith, William, okay, done with that one. Let's go to the next.
next one. Katie, Henry Puff. Okay, so see somebody came through and they attached the sum, but they didn't like take care of them. So that's why, you know, they, sometimes things just get forgotten or not done completely. So it's good to kind of go through and get these things tidied up. Okay, now what's going on here? This is a marriage record. But it's like they're trying to line it up with Charles and that doesn't make any sense. But these parents are correct. So my guess is just um, family search is just connecting them with the wrong sibling. Um, let's see what happens if we change it, put the William, focus on William and William, okay, yeah, so they have a different child. So that is, that's done. So I don't need that one. Let's go here. Belle, married to a Levi Staley. Okay, same information, same marriage information. And again, we already have this information and this, this one over here is actually even more correct because it's giving us the town or the whatever. Um, so I don't need to click add because we already have it. We don't need to have like an additional entry in their profile details, but we do want this source. So I'm just gonna attach. So even though it has that add button, you don't always have to hit it. Always hit it though if it's new information that is not on this side. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. So in just that one brief 10 person search, we found, we found something that I'm like, ooh, I wanna learn more about him. We found this family where we need to figure out what's going on with them. And I found this um, this new spouse relationship, this Elizabeth lady, remember she, this is her second marriage. So, so I've got three little projects to work on right now. I don't need any more projects than that. <laughs> three is plenty, three is even too many. So um, what I do is I just pick which one I feel like doing and make note of the others if I decide that I run out of time. Now, I'm only doing this for 30 minutes. I've got seven minutes left. So in my seven minutes, what, what should we do? What should we do? What should we do? What should we do? Um, they're all tempting. I don't know which I want to show you. All right, I'm going to focus on this one. I want to see if we can find out his name. Okay, so I'm going to go to Catherine because her profile is probably a little bit more complete than her spouse named Lo. So let's see. She's got 12 sources, nothing potential to click. We don't have a death date. We don't have a specific birth date. We know a month and a year, which probably came from a, um, a census record. And we just know country, that's all we know. We don't know her parents. We don't know anything. Interesting. And here is her marriage to a James Lynn and the children they had. Now her marriage to this low guy is 1893. Okay, this is this this time is overlapping. So is this a different Catherine O'Malley who married a low and had a daughter named Kate? Or did James Lynn have a nickname named Low? Or is Low just a name that was entered on a record and maybe somebody misunderstood the handwriting? Maybe somebody abbreviated. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? So there could be numerous reasons where this low came from. And Kate, so this says Violet May or May V Eccles. So where did Kate come from? Is Kate a nickname that Violet May had? I don't know. So I, we need to try to learn a little bit more about this family. Um, so maybe we need to look at James. Um, you know what, actually, first, I'm gonna look at low. How many sources? See, he doesn't have any um, like substantial information. No birth, no death, no nothing. Um, if I go to sources, it's just that one source. Let's see if there's a picture that we can look at. Um, okay, so I don't think we can see the picture very well, maybe. Oh, it's one of these things where you have to hunt. Okay, I, I don't wanna hunt. I really don't feel like hunting right now. Oh, I closed the wrong thing. Okay, let's go back. All right, so I'm, okay, here's low, Lynn, Lynn. Let's go back to Catherine. Catherine, oh, okay. Catherine and 
she went by Kate. And here's Lynn. So yeah, maybe the, like Lynn, L-I-N-N, -N, like maybe when somebody writes N's in cursive, two N's in cursive, maybe they looked like a W. You know, that could be what happened. So, okay, so I'm just trying to see what we know on him. Lynn, 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 Lynn. Look at all those ways that Lynn was spelt on these sources. My guess is low is Lynn. But that Kate is kind of an interesting thing. Why is Violet May going by Kate? Let's look at her. And it's going to refresh. May Plumpton. Did she marry a Plumpton? She sure did. And they said she went by May. So let's get that source attached to her. Oh, look, look, we just found more people. Okay, so um, sometimes people don't add them because they think, oh, they might be alive still. So um, when, anytime I add somebody, what do I do? I write it down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to do a quick search and see if they exist on, um, if I can find like a, a death record or something. If, if they are born, at, like, like if they're before, if, if, I usually won't add them if, if they're 1922 or 1924, because they could still be alive. I mean, even this 1915 could still be alive. Probably not, but they could. So I try to find out quickly <laughs> if they are alive or dead, if I can. Um, and then, then I'll, I'll switch them to living if I don't see anything because I don't want to offend a family and be like, hey, your grandmother is still alive, but I just made her dead, you know, and you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. So um, let me go click on her and see if I can find out if she's alive or if she has passed away. I'm going to go to Ancestry. And we have an account with them. Let's see if it logs me in. Yeah. Okay. Here's the Genevieve C. Plumpton. Okay, now the thing I love about Ancestry is they say, okay, well, if we think this is your person, and if you think this is your person, you really might want to check out these records over here. And look, there's a Pennsylvania death certificate. So it says her father was Ralph, her mother was Violet May, and she has a spouse. So father is Ralph. This is Robert Alfred. That's interesting. Hmm... It seems very much like a match, though. Violet May Hayes. Let me look at the image. Ugh, I hate when it's typed. It's hard to dispute it when it's typed. Uh, okay. No, 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 no. Who was the informant? Louise H. Uh, <laughs> Ralph. Okay. Well, did he go by Ralph? Did Robert Alfred go by Ralph? Do, 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 do. Robert A, Robert A, Robert A, Robert A. Find a grave, says Robert A. Hmm. Okay, and then, um, well, that child we added was the Genevieve. I'm going to go see sometimes I feel like do you guys really want to watch the way because my brain works so weird Robert A. Robert Alfred Robert Alfred okay all right so look at all these records he's in my goodness there's a lot Let's look at some of these. I open these up in new tabs, which further <laughs> drives people crazy. But that's just how I roll. Uh, confirms birth and death. Okay, here's a census. I just wanted to see, I wanted to see another 
thing that lists his family members. Because, remember, we're looking at, where is that? Did I close it? Oh, for Pete's sake. No, here it is. I'm like, did I close it? Genevieve, Marie, Lillian, Dorothy, Ralph, Richard. Dorothy, Ralph, Richard. Okay, so this is them, Lillian. And Lillian's here. So she, they're older, so they're not on the 1940 census. Let's see, was there a 1930 census in here? Yes, let's look at that. Oh, yeah, they were old. So those kids are, okay, let's find a 1920 census. 1920, 1920. Is there a 1920? Okay, I'm not seeing a 1920 census. Doesn't mean there isn't one, but... Lillian, Veronica, Dorothy, May. If I click this, sometimes they'll connect the dots. Sometimes they don't. Violet, May, Higgins. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well... I'm thinking it's the same people. Some people are probably gonna think I'm crazy, but I think it is her. So sometimes what I do is I go with that assumption and then I fully try to learn more about that person and the spouse and the kids and find more sources to prove it, which is more than I have time. It's hard to do family history in 30 minutes. I'm telling you, it's impossible. <laughs> Uh, okay, but we found like all those kids. So, yeah. So I just need to go through and just plug in their death dates, um, finish attaching, you know, these are additional children. But again, um, oh, you know what I could do? I can see if I can click on them and see if I can quickly find a death record. Do, 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 do. Yep, looks like this guy has passed away. So I can add that child. Um, and Richard, I like forgot which tab I was on. <laughs> okay, let me close some of these. Okay, Richard, Ralph, Rolf. Let's see if they find anything. And he's also dead. Okay, so I can go ahead and add these people. I have that death date, but for now, just to be quick, I'm just gonna create an ad. Okay, so then, um, yeah. So what I do is I go to her and I say, okay, where was that? I think I closed the one with Genevieve. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm just gonna close these real quick. Sorry, I'm like gonna drive everybody crazy. I don't know, we'll probably delete this recording <laughs> because I'm crazy. Okay, anyway, um, yeah. We've got some sources to attach on this guy. death index. This is draft registration, confirming his birth date. There we go. That one's done. Let's go to this one. Okay. Oh, different mother or different spouse of the father at the time. Is it Akron, Ohio? did live in Ohio in 1950s. It looks like they moved around a bunch, so I wonder if this is him or a different family. It's probably him. My 30 minutes is up. All right, it never ends. It never ends. There's so much to show you. There's so much more. I'm probably gonna sit here and work for like another hour. <laughs> but our time is up for the video. 
So anyway, that is my craziness. I, I, um, I love Pazilla. It helps me to um, quickly find a whole bunch of sources. And then through looking at those sources, I was able to find lots of different things. I found people I need to clean up. I found spouses. I found in-laws. I found missing children. I found potential children. I found um, that that one that one person where like she had the husband with a different name. Like that needs to get cleaned up. So I found a lot of stuff to do, and that is how I find it. So um, I basically, you know, like how to do all and navigate and all these the little things like the beginner kind of stuff wasn't my focus on the video tonight today was just to show you how you can utilize this third party application to help you very quickly like i only have five minutes what am i gonna do boom here you go look at all these look at all these people that have sources just sitting waiting to be attached so even just doing all that is a huge, huge, huge thing, let alone what information are you gonna find in all those sources. So to me, I feel like I'm a lot more productive because I don't have to hunt and peck and hunt and peck and hunt and peck. Let me see this person, let me check that person. I just say, boom, show me all their people, show me all the people that have potential things going on, and then I go and I check it out, and then as I do those sources, I find things and then when I'm looking at the person I'm gonna be like oh they don't have any kids hmm I doubt that well I mean maybe but let's go ahead and find their kids you know so I that's the way I go about my family history research so very quickly in that half hour I have found so much work to, to do you know things that I need to investigate more things I need to attach people I need to build profiles I need to double check on so so much work to be done and it was thanks to Pazilla and finding it super fast that I'm very quickly can find lots of work to do. So that's just my method of doing family history. I I love it. I, I love solving the mysteries. I love attaching all the sources. And so that's why I go about doing it the way that I do. So anyway, that's the brain of Amanda. <laughs> and you might be like, whoa, yeah, no, that's that's too crazy for me. Or you might be like, ooh, I liked that Pazilla thing. That Pazilla, it's P like P-U-Z-Z-I-L-L-A. I just like that it gives me this aerial view and I can systematically start at the bottom and work my way around. Or you start at the top and work all my way around. And then let's pretend um, that I haven't already been through this circle three times. I'm serious. I have I have gone through this this ancestor and this circle three times. And every time I finish, I click it again and there's new sources. It's amazing. The work never ends. And this is just one of my ancestors. I've got, you know, that original fan chart with uh let me see. Well, let's go back. Let me see his um do 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 his ancestors no that's not what I want to see I want to see his family anyway but remember my original fan chart I you know and just how oh, I wish I could go back so I could show you here we'll just do it but yeah my original fan chart remember Nathaniel was just the one person I picked he was just that one end person and that all those people stemmed from this one person now what's gonna happen when I go to this couple and this couple and this couple and this couple is like a lifetime of research <laughs> and I can't do it I can't do it all I am one person I can't do it all so that's why we need more people doing family history because we are all connected at some point when you go that far back on your tree and you're doing cousin descendancy you know kind of research we're gonna all end up being connected so the more that you guys do your little bit and I do my little bit, we'll get this done. And I love that it's one world tree, so I don't have to do all this work on my own and you all have to do it on your own. We all collaborate and we get a lot done. There we go. All right, that's the end. Have a great day.